Of breaking news. Whistleblowers are now coming forward to Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan, just like they have been to Charles Grassley and Ron Johnson. And they are alleging that your FBI, as we have been talking about a lot, has now been completely politicized and now trying to even purge any conservative employees. Jordan writes in a letter to a senior FBI human resources official that whistleblowers have uh, alleged that the agency now is revoking the security clearances of conservative employees and even outright suspending them. The FBI is telling Fox News in a statement that the FBI does not target or take adverse action against any employees for exercising their First Amendment rights or for their political views. Okay, if that's true, then why did the Attorney General that I am arguing has weaponized the Department of Justice, Merrick Garland, why is he trying to stop the whistleblowers in the FBI from talking to members of Congress? You might remember, he sent out that little memo after Charles Grassley said, we have over 20 whistleblowers last month. Uh, he sent it to DOJ employees reminding them that no department employee may communicate with members of Congress or congressional staff without advanced approval from the Office of Legislative Affairs. Uh, is he trying to intimidate these whistleblowers into si uh, silence? Here with more, Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan. Uh, sounds to me, I thought we had whistleblower laws. I thought we liked whistleblowers. I thought we, we, we put hearsay whistleblowers up on a pedestal. So FBI whistleblowers are yeah. being told to shut up. They're not allowed to talk to the likes of you or Grassley or Johnson. Is that what, that's how I interpret it. No, you're exactly right. That's the, that's the law, Sean, and it's supposed to be followed. But I think it's interesting, and you pointed this out a few weeks ago when I was on your show, and we talked about the 14 whistleblowers, FBI agents who've come to our office. The very next day, the very next day, Merrick Garland sends that memo out saying, here are the rules if you're going to speak to Congress. It was a memo designed to chill the speech of brave whistleblowers who want to come forward and tell us the truth. We also know that some of those whistleblowers have had their security clearance revoked, which is all always the first step in terminating someone at the FBI. And now we think there's been specific retaliation against a whistleblower who's been suspended. And this is one of the very first whistleblowers we had who's been suspended. He came to us back last fall with the school boards issue when we learned that memo uh, memorandum that came from Attorney General Garland designed to say, we're going to use the counterterrorism measures against moms and dads. And 20 some parents were investigated by the FBI for simply showing up at a school board meeting. So it continues continues to escalate. And then when you view it in context of everything we're doing, this is frightening stuff. All right. Let me talk about during the course of your investigation, and I'm hearing there may be as many as 30 whistleblowers. You actually said in the letter that you received the protected whistleblower disclosures that the FBI is engaging in this purge of conservatives. Now, there are two things seemingly going on simultaneously. If they're purging conservatives, silencing them, now Merrick Garland is intimidating them, basically saying uh, they're not allowed to talk to elected officials. That would contradict, in my view, whistleblower protection laws. Uh, but they're saying not only has it been politicized, now it's a purging. So what is going on with our Department of Justice? What's happening here? And when do we get to the bottom of it? Because if that's the case, that would explain why we don't have equal justice or equal application of laws in our country, which should scare the hell out of every American. Well, I think it's all designed. I, I think the, the, the plan is all designed to fit this narrative that Joe Biden's laid out there, that half the country are fascists and extremists, this crazy claim that he's made. And now they have to, as I've said, juice the numbers. We've had some whistleblowers talk about that, how they're getting pressured to label all cases as domestic violent extremism cases, to juice the numbers and to cook the books because the way they're cataloging these cases to make it appear that there are domestic violence extremists all over the country, all to fit this narrative. And you now see it manifest in what happened just a week ago in outside of Philadelphia with this pastor and his family. So that seems to be what they're what they're up to. And of course, if you have conservative, if you have FBI agents who are following the law and doing things the way they're supposed to, they're not going to go along with that. That's why they're coming to us and they're trying to stop them to come forward and give us the truth. I, I want to understand something. So we're now 40 days out of an election. We're going to have more January 6 hearings in the lead up to the election. We know that everybody on that committee has a, a political bias. That's fine. They're allowed to have their opinions. Uh, but they ignored the 574 riots 
that injured thousands of cops with bricks, rocks, bottles, Molotov cocktails. They ignore the yeah. fact that those 574 riots that a lot of Democrats said were mostly peaceful, encouraged by the likes of Kamala Harris, by the way, tweeting out support for a bail fund, praising defunding the LAPD. Yep. Uh, we had billions in property damage and dozens of dead Americans. Where's that committee investigating those riots uh, by left-wing groups? Or, or, Sean, the dozens and dozens of pro-life cri uh, crisis pregnancy centers that were attacked in the aftermath of leaking the draft opinion and the churches that were vandalized in the aftermath of le leaking that draft opinion. Where's those investigations? Why don't we hear about those? Are they, are they, are they raiding with, with 20 FBI agents, those kind of places, the, the people who did that harm, like they did to this pastor in, in outside of Philadelphia? So that Not is real. the thing that bothers so many American families. And I think they're going to remember that when they go to vote in 40 days. I hope they do. A lot at stake. Jim Jordan, Congressman, Ohio.